Okay, today I'm going to be cooking a full Blue Apron meal in the vacuum chamber. So as you can imagine, I expect a few difficulties from trying to cook this in the vacuum chamber. So here's the scenario. You're trapped in space. You just received your first order of your Blue Apron subscription and you can't wait till you get back on Earth and you just must cook it in a vacuum of space. How would it turn out? Well, today I'm gonna to attempt to answer that question. Can you cook a meal in a vacuum? So I'm going to be attempting to make sweet chili glazed drumsticks in the vacuum chamber. So if you don't know what Blue Apron is, they deliver farm fresh ingredients right to your doorstep in exactly the right proportions that you need. There's no trips to the grocery store and no waste from unused ingredients. And the best part about it is it allows you to create these delicious chef design recipes right at your home. And what's cool about it is you can select the recipes that you want. So there are eight different recipes that you get to choose from each week. And they're always adding new recipes to their menu so you get to try new and exciting things which is pretty fun. So they come delivered in a refrigerated box so the ingredients are completely fresh. It ships to most places in the US there's no commitment, you can skip or cancel the service at any time. So I'll put a link in my description. The first 100 people to sign up will get $50 off your first two weeks of Blue Apron. So now let's go ahead and see if I can actually cook this meal in the vacuum chamber. So in this recipe, I'm going to be cooking chicken, rice, eggs, and vegetables. So I want you to make your guesses how you think each of these are going to be cooked. So because of the limitations of my vacuum chamber and how small it is, I'm actually going to be cooking everything in a rice cooker. So the rice cooker does get hot enough to cook chicken and everything. It will be well designed for the rice, obviously, but everything else I'll just cook inside of it as if it were a pan. Okay, first we'll cook the chicken. So I'm just going to be doing two pieces to start off with because I have a smaller pan since the vacuum's smaller. Okay, I've got my chicken in here, my power connected. Let's vacuum it out, turn it on, and see if the chicken starts cooking, actually. You can see how the chicken's directly contacting the bottom of the pan. So do you think it'll cook or not? Okay, let's turn on the vacuum. Three, two, one. Okay, we're already the equivalent pressure past top of Mount Everest. Okay, so the chicken is boiling and Looks like it's cooking in there already. So we're starting to fog up on top of there. And so even if that water weren't heated in there, it would be boiling. So now that it is heated, it should be boiling very rapidly. That's where all this steam is coming from. So you can see it's still cooking in there. It's really foggy, but you can see it bubbling right there. But it still looks raw. Even right where it's bubbling, it looks raw. So out of everything, I expected the things that were directly contacting the hot pan to be able to cook. But now I see that even though it's contacting the hot pan, it has a lot of liquid in it. And while that liquid evaporates, it releases a lot of heat. So it's almost like it can't heat up the chicken because the water in it is evaporating so quickly. Because the boiling point is so low right now that it can't even heat up. Okay, so you can see the chicken in there. The blood in the chicken is boiling pretty rapidly, but it doesn't look like it's cooking even though it's touching the hot pan. It does look like that there's some burn stuff on the bottom there, and that's directly contacting the pan, so it looks like that is able to cook, but the chicken itself doesn't look to be cooking at all. So why don't we pull it out and see if the chicken that was contacting the sides of the pan cooked at all. Let's let in the air and see if the chicken cooked at all. Three, two, one. Okay, so let's see what we got here. So on the bottom, the top is warm. The bottom is just rock hard <laughs> and really dry. <laughs> so look at that. On the bottom, I just have dried, burned chicken. But then on the top, it's completely raw. So this pan is definitely hot enough to cook it. <laughs> I just burned myself on it. So that's because the boiling point of the water was so low in the vacuum chamber that any fluids in the chicken, when it got heated up at all, just immediately turned to vapor. And so we lost all of the fluids in the dry parts of the chicken, in the cooked parts of the chicken. So even if I tried to cook chicken like this in a pan without stirring or anything, I'd get similar results. So let's put a little piece of chicken in there and see if we can actually cook it and see how dry it gets at the end. Okay, it's been around 10 minutes now. 
This guy looks like he's cooked, but this one still looks pretty raw. You can imagine how fast these two pieces of small chicken would cook on a stove top, but they're not cooking at all now. Basically what happens is on the bottom, it just forms this extremely tough, hard, dry layer, and that probably insulates the chicken from the bottom even more. And since in a vacuum, that's the only way it can get the heat, it can't get any heat from around it, it has to come from the pan. And so the bottom just forms this insulating layer so it doesn't cook the chicken. So chicken in a vacuum chamber, yes, you can cook it. Here is the cooked chicken. And so basically you end up with very dry chicken no matter what you do. Okay, next we'll be trying out rice in the vacuum chamber. Let's see if we can get rice to cook in our rice cooker in the vacuum chamber. So what are your guesses for this one? For me, I was pretty off with the chicken. I thought the chicken would cook just fine because since the heat came from conduction normally, I thought it would cook the chicken fine. But what I actually discovered is that even though the heat does come from conduction when you cook chicken on a stove top, a lot of the heat actually comes from heating the air around it and that's able to heat the top of the chicken. Okay, we're at full vacuum. Our unit is not even on yet <laughs> and our rice is boiling. <laughs> so what that means is that our boiling temperature is so low now that it's room temperature. So it's already boiling in there, but let's turn on the heat. So basically what we should see now is the boiling rate should just increase very rapidly. But the thing is, the temperature won't change at all because the boiling is actually cooling it off, so it should just stay at around room temperature or even colder. So you can see the boiling getting more and more rapid in there as the heat is on now. So we'll cook it for the amount of time the recipe says, plus some extra time because, hey, it's in a vacuum. So everything's shaking in there, it's boiling so hard. But it's been about 20 minutes now. Let's open it up and see what the rice looks like. Let's see if it even increased in temperature. So I kind of expected this to still be cold, but it's actually hot, but it's not anywhere near boiling hot. So we're at about 64 degrees Celsius. So 20 minutes at 60 degrees Celsius was nowhere near what this rice needed to cook. So the only way this even heated up at all, I kind of expected it to be colder than it is, but the only way it heated up at all is because it was providing enough heat that it could heat it up faster than it could evaporate. And also because we had a lid on it and because the whole vacuum chamber was filling up with steam, it provided somewhat of an atmosphere in there so it was able to increase the atmospheric pressure enough so the boiling point could go up above room temperature. Okay, now for the final step, the vegetables and egg and then all my flavorings here that come in their little bottles. Okay, let's see if we can actually get this to cook in the vacuum chamber. So I'm a little bit hopeful with this because I saw with the rice I was actually able to heat it up because I was able to heat it faster than it could evaporate. So I'm hoping that with this egg in here I'll be able to heat it faster than the water can evaporate so maybe we can get it to cook. So again, without any heat yet, you can see the eggs are just foaming up and starting to boil. Okay, we're at full vacuum. I'm going to turn on the heat. <laughs> Look at the eggs in there. <laughs> so my guess is those are going to actually cook. Let's see what happens. I don't know if the eggs are actually getting warm enough to cook though. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. The unit is at hundreds of degrees now. So definitely at atmospheric pressure, these would have been cooked. I've waited a long time. They're still not cooked. So let's open it up. Let's check what the temperature of the eggs even is at this point and see if anything cooked whatsoever in there. So this one's about 66 degrees in there. So you can see that even though I don't have heat here, the pan is still hot. And now that I have pressure on it, it's not evaporating like crazy. And so it can start to cook on the bottom because when it evaporates, it cools itself. And here's my final product of a meal cooked in a vacuum chamber. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? If you've ever watched the cooking channel, you know it's all in the plating that makes that meal look appetizing. It doesn't really matter whether the chicken's raw or there's raw egg in the rice and the rice isn't cooked. If you plate it nice enough, anyone will eat it. Actually, since I didn't use all my ingredients and this smells really good, I'm gonna go ahead and have this for dinner tomorrow. Okay, this is much better. So thanks to my wife, Joanna, for cooking this in atmospheric pressure like a normal person would, and it turns out perfect. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it and you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button. 
and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video is out. Leave me any questions or comments that you have in the comment section and I'll try to get to them. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.